On our show, we've talked a little bit about Yule, Imbolc, and Ostara, and our next Sabbath, this Sabbath, is Beltane. So it's time to go back to the Wheel of the Year again. In the first Rupert's Tales book, which has stories in it about four of our Sabbaths, or holidays, part of the story about Beltane says, Beltane is a very special time of year, meant to celebrate passion and love, so that people will remember to take the time to make their lives below, as it is above. The people you see here dancing around their May Eve fire, they are celebrating their own, very human, very sacred desire. From shaking hands to caressing a child's sleeping face, touching each other is a natural thing to do among the human race. This and more is what our furry friend, <laughs> Rupert, learns in a very special place. From she who has many names and from he who has green leaves for his face. At Ostara, we talked about the land being fertile, which means it can grow things. Remember, I told you that if the land is not fertile, then it wouldn't be able to grow anything at all. At Ostara, we were talking about blessings and planting seeds. But now, at Beltane, we're talking about celebrating the fact that they're all growing. <laughs> it's so exciting. Of course, just how much anything is growing has a great deal to do with where you live. Where I live in Florida, our garden is growing beautifully. Pumpkins, sweet corn, green beans, lots and lots of potatoes, carrots, strawberries, lettuce, several different kinds of flowers, and so much more. It's incredible. And this certainly gives us plenty of reasons to celebrate. Every day I go out in my garden and I celebrate. Ooh, look at this, look at this. <laughs> it's so exciting. We are very happy that our soil is so fertile, so our crops and flowers are blooming and growing and giving us food. But it's not just the land that can be fertile or not. People can be fertile or not. Animals can be fertile or not. Birds and fish and trees and bushes and all kinds of living things are either fertile or not. And what that means is that they can have babies or not, whether those babies are human or whether they're seedlings or whether they're owlets. This means both men and women. Not every person is fertile and neither is every fish or frog or tree or tiger. The other thing that can be fertile or not is the things that we choose to do, the jobs we do, the choices and plans we make. If we plan a picnic and it ends up raining so we don't get to go and those plans don't work, they didn't grow, the plants didn't grow, they weren't fertile. If we choose to learn, uh, let's say something new, like, t like taking a painting class or playing soccer, but after we've started, we find out that we really don't like to paint or play soccer, then those things didn't work out for us. The choices didn't grow into what we hoped for. Those choices weren't fertile. That doesn't mean that those are bad plans or bad choices though, because we probably learn something about ourselves along the way. And that's always a good thing, even if we're surprised by the way things turned out. So Beltane is all about fertility and love and friendship. It's one pagan holiday or Sabbath, which Christians haven't changed to make their own. What's that you say? You wanna know what I'm talking about? Well, maybe you already know that. Or maybe this is the first time we've heard that. So let's step back for just a minute and talk about just that. I've already told you that pagans celebrate the turning of the wheel of the year, that we celebrate the seasons of the year, that we celebrate what happens in nature. The changing of the seasons is what pagans celebrate. You see, even when there weren't any people on the planet, nature did what nature always does. The seasons changed, the sun and the moon rose and set, the seeds started growing when the earth turned warm, and the plants died again when they were done growing or when winter started to set in. Pagans celebrate all of these things and more. There was a time long ago when all people did these things because they had to. There was nobody to give them anything. Everyone in the family and the village and clan or tribe all had to work together in order to simply survive. But time went on and many new things were created and the way of life changed. In fact, 
It's still changing and will continue to change forever. When you grow up and have children, and then grandchildren, you'll probably see some amazing discoveries. In fact, some of you may even be the ones to invent new things yourselves. That would be terrific. One of the many things that changed over the past several thousands of years is that many people stopped worshipping or serving many of the gods and goddesses that they used to. I'm sure you'll find out much more about how Christianity started as you grow older and whether you want to or not because so many people that you will know throughout your life are Christians. That's not the way it used to be, but that is the way it is right now. You must remember that everything changes with time, sometimes for the better and sometimes not. And sometimes when you think uh, it's not for the better, other people do. That's just the way it is. And as you get older, I'd like you to remember that all knowledge is worth having. And you should read and research and get the answers to, the question, to your own questions, especially where your faith or religion are concerned. You must decide for yourself what gods and goddesses you will serve, or if you will serve any of them at all. You get to choose. That's your choice. No matter what your parents teach you now, or what you discover later, you always have to make your own choices. You'll probably find some pretty shocking things out about religion as you get older, but for today, what I want to tell you is that, pe that Beltane is one pagan holiday that the Christian Church hasn't changed very much from the way that it has been celebrated for a very long time. Of course, as I've told you before, every celebration changes and everybody celebrates in their very own way, just like you celebrate your birthday differently each year. And why not? So let's start with Yule, the longest night. Christians celebrate Christmas and the birth of Jesus instead. But no matter which god or goddess you might celebrate or serve, Yule is still the longest night of the year. It's nature. At Imbo, we celebrate that life is returning to the earth and that winter is on its way out. Christians celebrate something called Candlemas, also known as the Feast of Purification, which marks the day that the baby Jesus was presented at the temple. We celebrate Ostara as the spring equinox, when day and night are equal and spring has arrived. Christians celebrate Easter, which is about Jesus rising from the dead after he was put um, on a cross to die. And while there are some Christian holy days during the month of May, there's nothing at all like Beltane. Some of your Christian friends may know about the Maypole and may celebrate May Day by giving people flowers, but Beltane is a pagan holiday. As you grow older, you'll find out more of the reasons we celebrate Beltane, but that's kind of like driving. When you're old enough to be able to drive, then you'll learn. There are many, many different kinds of love in the world, and you'll find about, out more about them as you grow up. I'm a grandmother, you know, and even a great-grandmother. And until my own grown-up children started having children of their own, I didn't know what it was like to love like a grandmother or a great-grandmother, and now I do. When you grow up, you'll find out about even more kinds of love than what you know right now. So you'll find out more about Beltane. Another way Beltane is often celebrated is with fairies. Fairies! <laughs> and fairies are fun! Um, it's said that the veil between the human world and the world of the fae is thinnest at Beltane. No matter if you believe fairies or the fae exist or not, many do believe so. There are a few books um, that even tell about, cave draw that tell about cave drawings and carvings that show people have believed in the fae for thousands of years. So if you believe in fairies, you might want to leave them a few offerings in your garden or near a tree or flowers as a part of your Beltane celebration and maybe, just maybe, they'll leave you something in return. At Beltane celebrations, you will often see a bonfire. We all love bonfires. Sometimes people will jump over the fire for good luck. Once upon a time ago, and sometimes even now, people will have two fires going at the same time, and they have their animals and their family and people that they care about walk between the fires through the smoke for blessings of health and fertility. 
And again, fertility may not be about having a baby. It may be having abundance of all kinds of uh, wonderful things in your life. New ideas. If you're a writer like me, or an artist, or a sculptor, or a painter, maybe new ideas for all kinds of different things. And maybe renewed um, fertility in bringing your family together in a happier way going forward. Beltane is a beautiful time to do that. So, if you walk through the fires, or excuse me, if you don't walk through the fires, <laughs> you can jump over the fire, or you can walk through the smoke, but don't walk through the fire, okay? Don't do that. But whichever you choose to do, remember love, friendship, fertility, abundance, that's what Beltane is all about. So no matter how you, ex how you celebrate this exciting uh, holiday, I hope you'll be, you'll be able to find much to be thankful for as the wheel of the year turns.